About 8 out of 10 bushfires in Australia are caused by lightning strikes. Animals are always the first to suffer from fire over millions of years of evolution. They come up with different ways to escape it and it's always worked, until the point when the animals themselves became the cause of fires. In the 1980s, a firefighter named Dick Yausen was called to put out a fire in Kakadu National Park. He eliminated the source of fire, but suddenly noticed a raptor with a burning stick in its talons. The bird flew a couple of feet more, dropped the stick, and the fire broke out in a new place right away. No matter how hard Yausen tried to put it out, the fire sparked again and again, like it was done on purpose. But this sounds like complete nonsense. Why would any animals set fire to their own home? After all, they all know that fire means death and where would a bird get fire to learn how to use it? Okay, birds of course don't start a fire on their own. In any case, people have not seen anything like it yet, but they make excellent use of the flame, which has already started burning. At least three Australian species, the black kite, the whistling kite, and the brown falcon are considered serial arsonists or rather fire hawks. The primary source of the fire can be a forest fire caused by lightning or any other cause. All you need to do is just wait and fire will certainly spread around. All that's left is to grab the burning stick with talons or take it in the beak and carry it to the right place. I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out the birds even thought of pulling branches out of the bonfires. What's next? They'll snatch logs from fireplace? Hold on. I still don't understand. What's the point of that? Birds can't be doing this simply out of spite or a desire to burn everything around. And the reason is really different. As soon as a fire breaks out, most animals simply have to flee for their lives. Fly, you fools! They get out of their hiding spots and move in a certain direction opposite to the spreading of the flame. This is an emergency evacuation inherent by nature, and the fire hawks understand it very well. No one will deny the instinct of self-preservation and think about the fact that there might be predators there. Maybe we should look around. To help with the predators, there's a fire blazing. What should you do when other animals are scared? Attack. That's probably the fastest and easiest hunting method ever invented by a predator. I wonder if the animals fleeing from the fire are considered fast food. Though, when you were a bird, you have to really try to understand how fire works. Observe, make conclusions, check out how exactly fire spread, whether it's possible to take a piece of disaster with you and move it to the right place. It only looks simple at first glance, because people have learned to use fire too long ago, and you know what? The birds may have done the same. The indigenous population of Australia has always known about so-called firehawks, while scientists are still arguing whether birds can deliberately set something on fire. Ordinary people figured it out 40,000 years ago, and they are certain, yes, birds can do it, and they do it all the time. Complete madness. On the other hand, after all people once realized they could use the flame created by lightning for their own purposes, so why can't others do the same? Birds can also observe and analyze what stops them from taming fire. Give these birds some more time and in a couple of thousand years, they'll invent their version of Facebook. However, using fires is not such a unique ability. It's just that animals usually do not start these fires on their own, but they've long figured out how to get the most from a devastating catastrophe. Like some other birds, Maribo storks follow the fires, not flee from them. They usually feed on carrion as well as insects and all sorts of small things like rodents. So the burnt out ground is the perfect place to have a feast for the Maribo storks. They got the nickname Undertaker Birds for a reason. Even though they actually got it for their looks, admitted they're not very cute. Some terrestrial predators also use fires for their own selfish purposes. Bears and raccoons often hunt animals that are trying to flee from the fire. I don't know how they do not catch fire at the same time, but maybe the reason lies in experience and cold-blooded calculations. When you understand which direction and at what speed the fire is moving, you can come up with a plan. However, many species already have their own survival algorithm. Not all animals mindlessly run away from the fire. Amphibians can bury themselves in the mud. Moose can wait out the disaster in the nearest reservoir and kangaroos. Kangaroos sometimes run towards the flames. According to research, kangaroos like wallabies, other marsupial species risk crossing the fire edge to occupy the territory, which has already burned. This makes sense. Since nothing is burning there, it means that there is nothing left to burn. So it's safe. 
perhaps if animals learned to put out fires, it would become much easier for all of us. But we're not there yet. So far, the best nature has to offer is firehawks and chimpanzees that understand how fire works, not like they talk to it like Harry Potter with the fireplace. Chimpanzees stay cool in front of the fire. They have an almost human ability to predict the spread of wildfires. When they see the flame, they calmly avoid it. No stress, by the way. That was how our distant ancestors once began to tame fire. It is unlikely any other animals like tortoises have any chance to start using fire. But on the other hand, they learn to save other creatures from disasters. The gopher tortoise can dig excellent burrows that provide shelter for over 350 other species during fires or hurricanes. Most importantly, the owner of the burrow does not mind the unexpected neighbors at all. Although this means snakes, including rattlesnakes, burrowing, owls, various frogs, and invertebrates, and probably everyone who can crawl through the entrance. Perhaps if all these animals that actually suffer from fires realize that sometimes birds are the cause they had well, somehow deal with them. Perhaps many fires in Australia would have been extinguished much faster if it were not for the birds. Love of fast food, but birds of prey are not the only one star starting fires. You've probably seen how birds sit on power lines, quite an ordinary scene. If these are modern power lines, then everything should be in order. But if the power lines were designed at the beginning of the last century, then the bird can actually cause an accidental spark. While they didn't think about the impact on wildlife back then, the bird can simply fly into the power line, then the spark hits the feathers, the feathers light up, and the poor birds really had tough luck. Turns out about a thousand years ago, people even used the ability of birds to cause fires. It's clear back then there were no power lines yet, let alone electric. Princess Olga, who ruled over Kiev and Ruz, used the birds to capture the city of Eskoristan. The siege lasted a whole year until Olga went for a trick. She offered the residents to pay her a strange tribute, three pigeons and three sparrows from each house. People of course were surprised, but agreed and gave Olga the birds. Then she ordered to tie some small pieces of cloth to each bird and at night when it got dark, they set the cloth aflame and released the birds, the pigeons food, or their nest, the sparrows flew under the roofs. A uh, fire broke out and the inhabitants were forced to flee, the city was captured. Does it mean that fires can be beneficial to the predators and Princess Olga? Generally, it seems to be true, but when I began to study this issue, I discovered an unexpected thing. Turns out animals almost do not die of fires, unless of course they last for a very long time occur due to natural causes or covered two large territories. Animals got used to the fact that something burns on Earth from time to time, and they know how to behave in that case. Moreover, fires even have a positive effect on nature. For example, on burned out pastures, there's 20 times more food for moose, so it's unlikely they'll be against fires. Also, wilderness areas such as forests and prairies grow naturally and change over time. A fire is something like a reset button when everything is rolled back to factory settings. But sometimes even the best reboot in the world can get out of hand and result in a blue screen of death. Forest fires are so intense, they can create their own weather systems, causing more fires. Yeah, you heard right. Fires that cause fires, smoke, and hot air rise upwards. Where pyrocumulus clouds form, the quivering air causes water droplets and ice crystals to collide building up an electrical charge and turning the system into a giant thunderstorm mushroom. Thunderstorms mean wind, which helps fire spread and lightning, which causes new outbreaks at a great distance. In at least one case, such a mushroom even created a fire tornado. Can you imagine the consequences? So good things come in small packs, especially when it comes to fire. See you later.